Yeah. I think it's got my legs up in the seat for with your own hand. Ooh. Especially high altitude. Only a few more to go. It's not too bad. We're at Bandelier National Monument near Los Alamos, New Mexico, where we've spent the morning hiking one of the main trails and learning about the ancestral Pueblo people who were the cliff dwellers in this area in the canyon. And it's just, it was breathtaking to look at, at what is out here and to see the way they lived. Well, part of this area stems from the volcanoes that erupted, you know, hundreds, thousands, millions of years ago. And then this, the ash that spewed from that piled up here and essentially created the, what it's called the tuff and T-U-F-F -F, and it hardened into rock and it formed the cliffs behind us. And so the ancestral Pueblos were able to carve into that tuff and create their dwellings. And so they would use a series of ladders to, you know, climb up into that. And they also had, you know, stone dwellings down below too. So they usually create a one to two story, uh, brick building down below and then they would use that to climb up into the cliffs where they both stored their wares and food and they used it for shelter depending on the time of year. Well they had they also had a village that had, they had made at, at kind of the base of the cliffs and then up in the cliffs you have and, and you mentioned the, the houses there's one section and I've got video of it it's called the long house it was almost an apartment <laughs> uh, like an apartment complex along the side of the cliff where they had all these you know two and three story um, buildings all connected where, where they were living and, and storing things, that kind of thing. And then they would climb to the top and they would actually do the farming on the mesa at the top. So just a, just kind of an incredible way to think about living. Well, and you, you talk about like your daily commute. It sounded like in the summer, the young people would go up to the top of the cliffs into the mesas and that's where they would farm during the summer. And the, the older generations would stay behind and watch the children in the village. And it was built in a circle with only one entrance. So they said it was sort of like... Um, it was easy to keep track of the kids because the little kids couldn't just wander off because they were inside this like brick, you know, brick dwelling area. Um, but then during the winter, you know, they'd all come back and live here in the cliffs because it was protected from the elements. And there's also, a, a, I guess it's a little river that's ebbed and flowed over the years, um, but they specifically built in this area so they would have easy access to that water. As you walk the main trail or the Pueblo trail here, there's a really good app from the National Park Service you can get and you can download it because cell service was non-existent once you're in there for T-Mobile. You had a little bit on I Verizon. I had Verizon, I was doing okay. Um, but download it before you go and then there's there's markers along the way with numbers and you can kind of learn about each of the stops because there's a lot of places that are still preserved here that you can see now the, the dwellings, it's just the base basically at this point, but you can kind of get a feel for the the shape of the village. You mentioned that circular shape and um, the kivas, they're, they're religious gathering areas. They're, there's areas there that you can see and it's just really neat and then you can continue along the trail and there are some places uh, you can see petroglyphs along the way uh, there's a couple spots where you can actually climb up the ladders and see into some of the, the rooms that were there so that was that was really neat to be able to see that and do all of that I really did enjoy the fact that you can climb in and look and that obviously not in all of them, but the state or the national park has done a good job of making at least three or four sections where you can do that because they know people are curious and it really gives you a feel for what that was uh, and how they lived and where they stored their food and everything. So in a couple of cases, it's just a short, you know, normal ladder height, uh, you know, maybe 10 steps up. But in the big one, um, alcove the house. alcove house, it's a good of 140 Cl 140 100 feet, feet up it's climb like. and there's stone steps and wooden ladders and a couple handrails but it's pretty tight and you have to be pretty in good shape to be able to climb that and not afraid of heights so they do warn you multiple times before you do that but the view from the top is amazing and there's another kiva up there so it's just crazy and and that alcove house is quite a ways away from the village and so I'm, I'm not sure they said they don't know 100% what that area was used for it might have been a lookout it might have been ancestral it might have been religious um, but it is just really cool so if you have the physical ability to climb up to alcove house uh, that's really cool to see that but I, I just really enjoyed the fact that they were able to preserve enough of it so that they do feel like you can go up in and kind of peek into those dwellings it is fantastic that they've been able to preserve this and you can get up and see them. And when we say ancestral, they're saying people lived here between 500 and 700 years ago and, and people kind of came and went. And we talked to one of the rangers and it's, it's kind of funny because there's petroglyphs, but there's also pictographs, which is where they actually painted on the walls. And you noticed a couple uh, on some. And they said, the ranger was telling us that that actually had been preserved because it had been plastered over at some point. And so in those hundreds of years that people came and went from this area, somebody had 
built a place. <laughs> somebody built a place, put a painting on the wall, and somebody else had moved in later and said, I don't like that painting, and they plastered over it. But that ended up preserving that painting, yeah. and now you can see it. So that's really cool because archaeologists were able to pull that plaster, and, and they saw that was in there. Um, but, yeah, the ability to get up there, it's really unfortunate. We did not get to see one of the kivas in the cave dwellings. It's closed right now for restoration because they've had vandalism. Uh, and apparently this one in particular, they often have to close it so that they can smoke it and replaster it because people are getting in there and, and doing graffiti and other things. It's, it's just so sad. It's just unfortunate, very much so. But speaking of like the petroglyphs, yes, yeah, you go along, especially along the long house, as they call it, uh, make sure you look up and spend some time really paying attention to it because you can see uh, the different petroglyphs that they've carved up there. And there's supposedly birds and dogs, wolves, animals, uh, whatever it meant to them. I mean, some circles, we're not really sure what they mean, uh, but it's very cool to kind of stop along and see those. Oh, I was going to say, it's kind of easy to know where to look because if you think about the, the longhouse being maybe two or three stories high, you can see... <laughs> holes in the in the canyon wall where they have where they would have put the logs to support mm -hmm. the roofs and you can kind of tell where somebody would have almost stood on the roof in order to do the the uh, petroglyphs and so that's <laughs> a neat way to kind of get an eye level view of, of what's going on up there and, and you can see those we're actually filming this down at the parking lot near the visitor center where we have our van we do not have our airstream with us uh, there is rv parking up at the top of the mountain because you have to drive down into the canyon here. A really long way. Really long way to get down here. And there's no room for trailers down here. Smaller RVs, they'll let park here, but there's not a lot of parking in general. And in the summer months, they actually run a shuttle from up above. And that's the only way you can get in here. So when you are coming here, determines where you're gonna be able to park even if you have a car. So make sure you check ahead. Um, if you have a trailer, there is RV and, and bus parking up near the top and they welcome you to come in, drop your trailer and then drive down to the visitor center. So uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're coming here. And then also while you're here at the visitor center, the buildings surrounding it are actually an old lodge that they used to have here that you could stay at. It was built by the CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps. So you're excited to see that because that's your thing. <laughs> Yeah, and it's really cool, and it's kind of cute because in the in the gift shop, uh, there's some old magnets and postcards uh, that would have been like the advertisement for the lodge because it says new, brand new, open in the blah 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 canyon. You know, come and stay in your overnight accommodations and like hike and get guided tours into the cave dwellings. And like, there's pictures of people like in the or in the cliff dwellings and in some of the stuff that's now closed to the public. So I mean, that I think that was back in the 30s and 40s. So can't really do that anymore. But it is really cool that they were able to preserve the lodge at least. And so that is here. And now it's um, there's a restaurant. So if you need food, you can grab lunch here, grab snacks, all your touristy magnets is, you know, and postcards. And but there's also a little section of the gift shop that does have some um, Pueblo pottery and carvings and jewelry and stuff here. So if you are you know looking for something local to purchase, there's a there's that here as well. Well, you can't stay in the lodge anymore. There are a couple campgrounds here. I don't have any of the details on them, but if you're looking to come here and stay, you know, check into it. It'll be on the you know National Park website. Um, but if you're anywhere near the Santa Fe or Albuquerque area, I would encourage you to stop in and check this place out. It's really cool. Yeah, and the closest city actually is Los Alamos. So any of those three, if you're in that area, consider getting to Bandelier National Monument. It is well worth the trip. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.